was uh, on a May uh, in 1977. I was out with some friends, and uh, my friend's dog knocked my shoes into the lake up in Rogers Park. And I thought the water looked really, really deep, and it wasn't. And I hit my head, and I broke my neck. You know, pretty much like that, my, my world changed. And um, it took a while from that point to go through the process of um, really g gaining my voice and gaining my power back again uh, in order to make me ready to do something like this. I went back to being a nurse in a clinic at the woman's hospital, and I, I just don't ask me why, but I kept the names of all the disabled women that came to see me on my uh, desk calendar. I just wrote their names down. And on a day that I was really, it was really slow, I went and read all of their charts. And that's when that change started to happen in me um, because all the women that had come to see me who had disabilities, there were 26 names, and almost all of them, uh, the staff had not asked them all the normal questions you ask a woman in a woman's health center. Like, are you sexually active? Have you ever had a baby or a sexually transmitted disease? Um, they just apparently hadn't asked those questions of those women, and it really made me angry. So I came into disability rights before I really had fully um, accepted my identity as a woman with a disability. I, I got angry as a nurse. and went to the staff and said, this isn't right. And they asked me to help them fix it. And that took me on a journey out to Berkeley, California, where I went to a conference on sexuality and disability in 1979. And there, everything was different. There were curb cuts. There were, was a lift on a bus. There just was really a different, people didn't stare at me because there were a lot of people with disabilities. And I asked one of the faculty, who was a woman um, with a disability, how come everything's so different out here? And she told me because of disabled people who uh, made it their business to change things. And so when I came home, I got involved with um, a group of people at the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago that designed what became Access Living. We uh, demonstrated, so we had protests all around the country. Um, a lot of people here um, during that period, I didn't, but a lot of pe people here got arrested. Um, I certainly participated in a lot of the big protests all around the country. And then we worked really closely with uh, people we knew inside of the Bush administration. Um, so it, it was a very personal thing for all of us. You know, once you're part of a movement, especially our movement, you realize that the issues are the same no matter where you live. You're cut out. I think what, we, what you know about any civil rights law is they don't self-enforce. You know, there's not like a switch. One day the law is passed and then all of a sudden everything changes. It takes people to make the laws work. There's one billion people with disabilities in the world. And it, you have to always be vigilant and keep pushing.